Well, the major priority, which is, which is for the first time announced uh, in the official uh, governmental document is uh, energy efficiency and I think that it's really a huge step forward because you know in Soviet time and in the transitional period Russia didn't pay too much attention to this enormous potential which can actually uh, be uh, estimated at about uh, 90 million tons of oil 250 billion cubic meters of gas and so on and the biggest Russian gas field it lies in the pipelines as Russian expert I like to say. So uh, it's uh, the first target to reduce uh, energy intensity by 50% by 2030, which is a really challenging task, but nevertheless. Uh, the second thing, uh, very important, is to uh, re-establish pricing proportions. You know that gas is underpriced, undervalued, and uh, another important thing is to return to normal correlation in the interfuel competition. And, of course, diversification of export markets and development of the eastern part of Russia in terms of uh, gas supply, power supply, development of oil fields and oil transportation system. So it's also an important thing which will make these two parts, western and eastern, more or less equal because now there is a huge difference between them. No, of course it doesn't, but you are right, uh, there is a priority to develop new additional export supplies uh, to the Asian region, to China, but not only to China, it's the whole Asia-Pacific, including Japan, South Korea and the other countries. And uh, it seems that currently when European gas demand is in stagnation, while Chinese primary energy consumption and gas consumption is booming. They've just reported that during the first half of this year, their gas demand has increased by additional 15%, which is really very difficult to understand. But nevertheless, uh, of course, this growing market, it's very attractive. And a huge part of additional gas production will go to this market, but uh, it is absolutely different resource base uh, comparing with the European gas supplies, so, th so they are not affecting each other. Europe is Europe and it's highly attractive markets, a market in terms of prices, you know, Chinese market uh, has regulated rather low prices, uh, so we are just diversifying our portfolio and it doesn't mean that we are not looking at Europe anymore. Well, um, from the theoretical point of view, a uh, cartel on gas market is absolutely impossible and it doesn't matter who will be the members of this organization, it simply cannot work because uh, gas demand is much more elastic compared, for example, with a uh, normal oil pack and production it cannot be adjusted uh, very quickly. It is not as flexible as oil production in Saudi Arabia, which is swing producer. We don't have such a swing producer on the gas market. Moreover, the biggest part of gas supplies, it is linked, uh, it is a fixed uh, in the long-term contracts, so it's not a subject for uh, renegotiation, and therefore um, uh, I don't see uh, such a room for a real cartel which could affect prices uh, through quotas mechanism. But at the same time, uh, I wouldn't underestimate the potential influence or which uh, gas exporting countries form could have on the market because uh, even without quotas, even without direct impact on the prices, they could affect these prices through coordination of their investment policy. So it's much more smooth mechanism, soft power, but nevertheless it will have, might have, very long-term consequences. And therefore, uh, it's, I think, really important for Europe to monitor all the development and all the negotiations inside the uh, gas exporting countries forum.